Great to be here tonight. I'd love you if you can find a Bible uh, in uh, the seats in front of you. Turn with me uh, to John. And we're starting right, right at the beginning in J- John chapter 1 and verses 1 to 9. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, but the darkness has not understood it. There came a man who was sent from God. His name was John. He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Well, I wonder whether there was a slight lack of light in your day today. Did it seem slightly darker than normal? If it did, then there's a good reason for that. It was the shortest day of the year. Even if you got up at 8 o'clock, there were still four more minutes of darkness before the sun came up. And if you had a rather long lunch, then you might have missed it because the sun went down again at 3.53 this afternoon. It was the darkest, shortest day of the year. The good news is it all gets lighter and brighter from here. But one of the interesting things isn't it, about living in London is that, does it ever really get dark? In London? Have you noticed that? Have you actually tried to find a really dark place in London, a really physically dark place in London? If you go out to the countryside this Christmas time, you'll find yourself standing on a field or in a road somewhere looking up at the sky going, wow, look at these incredible stars. Why did we miss out in London? What did we do wrong to miss out on all this? Well, we haven't missed out. Actually, it's all right there above us. Here is a picture of uh, Tower Bridge when there was a blackout. This is what London actually looks like. This is the sky above London. Hundreds of millions of beautiful stars that make up the Milky Way right above our heads. Yet we just can't see them. The BBC News Agency reported half of the UK population cannot see any stars because the night sky is so saturated with light pollution. We can't see anything that's above us, just the glow of the London lights that are burning. And I wanted to ask you a question tonight. I want to ask you whether the Christmas lights with the sky glow of London living is stealing you from the true darkness. And whether having stolen you from the darkness, it's stolen you from the true light that gives light to all men. You see, it's only when we are in great darkness that we're able to see the most wonderful lights. It's only when we're in that place of contrast that we can see the beautiful stars. C.S. Lewis writes, if there were no light in the universe, we should never know it was dark. Dark would be without meaning. You see, light gives meaning to darkness And darkness gives relevance to light. I think that if we don't find Christmas in our hearts this Christmas, we're never going to find it under the Christmas tree. If it's not within us, we're never going to find it without of us. And you can only recognize the Savior when you know that you need saving. I'm sure you uh, might have seen this painting before, but it's new to me. Uh, This is a painting by a Dutch painter called Gerrit van Honthurst. He was Dutch, which is good for me because I'm also Dutch. I like to point out good things that have come out of Holland. I like to think that I might be one of those good things that have come out of Holland. (laughs) But early in his career, he visited Rome and he followed in the school of Caravaggio, a great painter I'm sure you know and love. And this, in my view, is Honthurst's finest painting. It's called The Adoration of the Shepherds, painted in 1622. Now, what I love about this painting is if you look at it closely, you cannot see a single glow stick. You cannot see a single candle, not a single plug-in lamp, not even a single star. 
all of the light in this painting comes from the Christ child himself. Every bit of light in that picture, well, everything radiates from Jesus himself. The, the faces of the shepherds are illuminated by the presence of Jesus. The face of Mary and the face of Joseph, you'll notice, are without halos, which was traditional to paint upon uh, the saints at the time. All of the light in their faces comes just from Christ. There was no holiness within them other than that that came from Christ upon them. Even the oxen is glowing in the presence of Jesus Christ. And the reason is that he wasn't just any other baby. He was the light that came into the darkness. In Matthew 1.18 it states, Mary was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit. Then actually, this is God's visitation to us. God came down into the darkness. He demonstrates light in the dark world around us. And Van Honthurst is actually making a, a visual reference here to Exodus 34, 35, where Moses would go into the place of meeting, where he would meet face to face with God. And when he came out of the tent, his face was glowing so brightly, they had to put a veil over his face to protect the faces of the people. Van Honthurst is saying, when Moses met God, his face shone. This is God. See how the people's faces shine. And this is a story of hope to us this Christmas. When we try and hide from the darkness, we lose sight of the light. But when we acknowledge the darkness, we can begin to see the light that gives light to all men. Martin Luther King said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. And God sent his light to drive out the darkness. But in John 1.5, it says, the light shines in the darkness, and yet the darkness has not comprehended it. The darkness has not understood it. And when we look around our world metaphorically at the darkness that we see, we can see that's true. The world's struggling to understand the Christ child. Still today in the newspapers, you'll read stories about you know, the true meaning of Christmas. And, and, and it couldn't be further from the truth that we know and love. The darkness still hasn't comprehended it. What is the darkness? Well, it's when we see the dark mountain within us. It's the end of ourselves. It's that place of sin. It's when we're so self-reliant. We fail to see our need for rescue. We only find that we have need of a savior when we find that we have need of saving. I found myself a couple of years ago paddling across the harbor where my mum and dad live. And I'd never done it before. But it was a beautiful day and the sun was out and the water was flat and I surf on the spit, which is by a pier on the other side of this estuary. And I thought, today, I'm not going to go across on the ferry. I'm going to paddle myself. It's a beautiful day, and why not? And so I got on my board, and I started to paddle. And I thought, I'm having the time of my life. But I didn't realize that there was a particularly strong tide running that day. And it was particularly sunny and bright, so it looked fantastic. But I soon found myself drifting in the currents. And I lost control, and I got sucked between two uh, fishing boats, two uh, large fishing boats that were moored on one line. And the water went between them, and then it went down for 60 feet. And, and I was sucked off of my board, and I remember thinking, oh my goodness, I'm actually going to die. And, and lots of things flashed before my eyes, as they say they do in the movies, they really do. And I started to disappear under the water, and I reached out, and with one last attempt, I grabbed a hold of a small metal ring that was welded onto the very front of the left-hand vessel, and I clang on, and I screamed like I've never screamed before, help me! And someone had seen me disappear between these two large fishing trawlers, and they'd got in their boat, and they'd motored, and they, they, they found me clinging on to this tiny metal ring. I've never been so thankful for rescue. But you know what? I didn't know that I need saving. I didn't know that I needed saving. 
until I realized I needed saving. There are no strong people in the world. There are no self-sufficient people in the world. There are not even any holy people in the world. We all need saving. I was really touched by watching Bear Grylls at the Alternative Carol Service last week. Here's someone who's world famous for being self-sufficient. He is Mr. Survivor. And I want to show you what he had to say about strong people. Jesus said it simply in words that have always touched me. And he said this, come to me, get away with me, and you'll recover your life. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy on you. Keep company with me and you'll learn to live freely and lightly. These words are like honey to me on that dark mountainside, the mountains that we all sometimes face. And I'm no longer too proud to admit that I need my Savior beside me, within me, around me, to win me. Here's someone who is self-reliance, marks him, but whom knows that God-reliance is the foundation of him, who knows that actually on those dark mountaintops, in those places of incredible vulnerability, there is only one light in the darkness that he needs, and that is Jesus Christ. The angel says to Joseph in Matthew 1, 21, she, Mary, will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. My children have been having a lot of fun uh, with glow sticks this Christmas. It seems quite popular for the children to start running around with glow sticks now and waving them at different services. And we've had glow stick discos in my house where we turn off all the lights and listen to great carols and dance around, waving our glow sticks about. But I was thinking, actually, <clears throat> these glow sticks, they have their origin not in celebration but in rescue. And, and I went to the sailing shop this week down on Embankment and I haven't got a yacht, I'm sure none of you have either. But if you did have a yacht, then you might need one of these. It's a safety light stick. This is the stick, this is the glow stick that you need when you are lost at sea, when you've been washed off your yacht and you're floating around in the wild ocean. Uh, this is the stick that you need when you're lost in a snow snowstorm on the dark side of the mountain. Uh, this is the stick that you need when you've foolishly paddled across a tidal harbour on your surfboard and got sucked in between two large trawlers. This is the thing that you need. Because in the world they think that Christmas is about entertainment. It's about celebration. And yes, it is about celebration, but it's not about celebration before it's about rescue. You know, when I was sucked between those two trawlers, I, don't th I didn't think to myself, I'm going to be rescued in a minute. I'm going to have a celebration. I'm going to start singing happy songs and waving my hands in the air and celebrating the fact that I'm going to be rescued sometime in the future, I'm sure. I needed to wait for my rescue before I could begin my celebration. So many people this Christmas will be celebrating, but you know what? They've never been rescued. They've never seen the dark night, and they've never seen the shining star. You need to be broken to be rescued. You need to come to the end of yourself to be rescued. And you know what? When you're broken, you're saying, God, it's not in me, it's in you. I have nothing within myself. I need your rescue. And when we're broken, that's when the light of Christ comes into our lives and he meets with us. You see, everyone has the potential to shine for Christ, but not everyone's been broken. Not everyone's come to that place in themselves where they've lost their self-sufficiency and they've said, Jesus, I've come to the end of myself. I need you. I need your rescue. And once you've been rescued, then you can celebrate then you can enjoy a life of what it means to be rescued by Christ and have Christ dwell within your heart. A Christian is simply a person 
who's come to the end of themselves and have said, God, I need you. The glow of the child, like stars, it never goes out. It's just often that it's only the people in real darkness who know that they have need of a real savior. There was a school teacher who had a particularly difficult boy in her class called Charlie. You, you don't call them difficult anymore. You say they're educationally challenged. Charlie was educationally challenged. And uh, his parents were also very pushy and they were always coming in for the sort of parent-teacher meetings at the end of school to make sure Charlie was progressing appropriately. So the teacher had to be very careful when it came to the nativity service because Charlie needed to be in the service, but he didn't need to be in the service in a way that he might wreck the service. So the teacher thought for a long time, how am I going to involve Charlie in the service without him destroying the service? So she thought, I know, I'm going to make him the innkeeper because that's this really safe role. He just has to go up to the door, open the door, say, no, Jesus, you cannot come in. No, Mary and Joseph, you cannot come in. Uh, there's no room at the inn and then shut the door again and then they're going to go away. That, how hard could it be? So she trains him for a month, which is quite tedious because he keeps opening the classroom door and shouting, no, you cannot come in, go away, and then slamming the door again. And when finally it comes to the day of the nativity play for the school in the local church, all the parents are there and Charlie's parents are very close to the front looking forward to a, a very fine performance and high level of inclusion. The teacher's feeling very anxious and Mary and Joseph begin to make their forlorn journey along the, along the stage to the inn and they, Joseph knocks loudly on the door. The teacher's heart is pounding in her chest and Charlie opens the door and sticks out his hands and says, no, go away. There's no room in the inn. Go away. Slams the door again. And the teacher feels delighted. She's absolutely delighted. She cannot believe it's gone so well. And Mary and Joseph continue their forlorn journey along the stage. But at that point, suddenly the door swings wide open again. And then Charlie pokes his head out, tears streaming down his face. He says, no, wait, you can sleep in my bed. <laughs> you see, Charlie was onto something, wasn't he? Yeah, Charlie was onto something. Christmas is about saying, Jesus, you can come and live in my heart. The world is saying, no, go away. There's no room in my life for you. Go away. I'm closing my door to you. I don't need your rescue. I don't need your saving. But Charlie opened the door again and said, no, come in. I need your rescue. I'm broken. I need you to come and live in my heart. Tonight could be a good night for you. Maybe you're a visitor or a guest here and you've come along with a friend. Tonight might be the night to say, you know what? This Christmas was just going to be about celebration. And I still want it to be about celebration, but it's going to be about the celebration of a rescue that I've received. I want to receive that rescue now in Jesus' name. Once you've received the rescue, you can join in the celebration. But you know, Jesus doesn't even just leave us there. Because once we've received the rescue and we've joined in the celebration, we're invited to the witness. You are invited to carry that same presence of the Christ child into the world this Christmas. You're invited to glow with the presence of Jesus to your family, to your friends, to your workplace, into your community. You're welcome to witness to the Savior who's rescued you. In Philippians 2.15 it says, the children of God without fault in darkness in which you shine like stars in the universe. You become the stars. You shine. You are the presence of Christ in a hurting and broken world. Once you've experienced the rescue, join in the celebration and then you begin the witness. Pope Francis says that God is the light that illuminates the darkness even if it does not dissolve it and a spark of di divine light is within each of us. You are divine lights. God has invested himself in you. And we're gonna celebrate that light now, symbolically. I'm gonna light this candle and I'd like you to all raise your own candles. And we're gonna pass this light to one another as a sign of the light of Christ that dwells in our own hearts. And then we're gonna begin the celebration of worship. Before we light them, I'm going to show you this one 
little nativity clip. We're going we're gonna to watch this. We're going to pass the flames around. So carefully watch as we pass these around and enjoy. This is the beginning of the celebration. Happy Christmas, everyone. Mary was really scared when the angel came to her. There was one main angel called Gabriel. He was just a boy angel. She had wings and she was all white. The angel said, you're going to have a special baby. And it was God's son. She was quite excited. A bit scared. And she was like, oh my gosh, I'm going to have the son of God. And then she was like, I can't, I'm not married and stuff. Joseph, he was a builder. Mary told Joseph that she was having a baby called Jesus and it was God's son. He was like, what? Then Joseph saw the angel in a dream. I think Joseph was really scared. And then they went to Bethlehem. On a donkey. It would be quite hot. She had a baby in her tummy and she would have been really heavy. <laughs> she said, Can we stop anywhere with these houses? They had to try and find somewhere for Mary to have the baby. They went around a whole neighbourhood. No, there's no space. Everyone said no in an angry voice because it was the middle of the night. The last innkeeper, he said, yeah, there's a barn type thing around the back. They had to go to a barn and have their baby. It had sheep. It was like all hay and animal poop and sheep and things. Mary put baby Jesus in one of those troughs. They call the baby Jesus and they loved him. And he has two daddies, God and Jesus. They both needed to look after the baby. The angel told the shepherds to follow the star. There was three kings. They followed the star all the way to where Jesus was born. When they get to the table, they go them to eat the presents. and then they got some angels as visitors too. And then there was a giant star. Everyone was there. Then there was a party. enjoyed that for the celebration. Let's um, pray now as we hold these candles carefully in front of us. Lord Jesus, we recognize the darkness around us and within us. And we recognize our need for saving. We need a savior. And you, Lord, are the light that came into the darkness. We welcome you, Jesus, again this Christmas into our hearts. We offer you ourselves and say we've come to the end of ourselves. We need you, God. We receive your rescue again today, the forgiveness of sins, the promise of life everlasting. And this Christmas we want to join in the celebration because we've been rescued by you, God. And Father, we want to pray that having received the rescue and begun the celebration, you would use us for witness. We pray that each of us might shine like stars in the universe this Christmas, that we might 
just illuminate those around us with the presence of Jesus. Lord Jesus, by your Holy Spirit, shine through us. Use our hands and feet and voices to speak of your goodness to a broken and hurting world. Come, Holy Spirit, use us to witness to the great light that gives life to mankind. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord and Saviour. Amen.